have our telephone. It's an extraordinary device. I can make some great international calls sometimes. Cause the night's the night, am I right? Dan! Oh no, I caught one! Welcome to the University of Waterloo. Today we'll be going inside a fluid mechanics lab to use the flume. Come along. So what we're going to be doing is putting fish inside the flume to see exactly where they make the habitats, based off of Reynolds' number. Here yeah, by that, technician TH. Oh hi, I didn't see you there. I was just preparing to take a bath, actually. Well, would you like to show us exactly how we have Oh, sure. So what we have here is an apparatus called a flume. And what we've got is a steady state flow flowing through the system and exiting at the south end right here. What we put in is some fine grain sediments over here and we build it up so that we can study the behavior of feed of fish with respect to the flow rate. Now what we want to do is we're going to calculate the flow rate by calculating the volume that fills up this graduated cylinder in a given time. Using that flow rate, we will be able to determine the velocity and in turn, determine the Reynolds number. So according to my calculations, that's about 0 0.0007 meters cube per second. So give or take 1 liter per second flow rate, which is pretty good, is what we wanted. Now it's time to introduce the real stars of the show, the fish. We're going to put them in the flume. Detroit, look at that magnificent beast. You see how it's adapted to hiding out in an area below Reynolds number. It's avoiding the fast velocities that are going to be attributed to the top of this channel. It's going to hide out in the area of low pressure. Crikey, that is a magnificent So now I'm going to explain to you guys how we actually go about calculating the Reynolds numbers with the two different fish. The first fish we have is the fish here, which has been Foolish, which our friend TH is nicknamed Ronnie. And then we have the fish here, which has been the smarter one. So I think at this point we're all very familiar with the Reynolds number and how to calculate it. But, so let's look at this uh, specific example. I think uh, it's more convenient to express our velocity in terms of a flow rate over an area. Uh, and the way we calculated that flow rate was by using our average flow rate with uh, our three trial volumes and uh, times that were recorded. The area we're considering is this region over here with a width of seven centimeters and height of two centimeters. And the length we're looking at is the length of the fish body, which we've assumed as five centimeters. And we're considering a flow of uh, 20 degrees Celsius, and we were given a kinematic viscosity for that. So plugging in all our numbers into this expression, we should receive our Reynolds number in the order of 27,755. My calculations are correct. That's pretty turbulent. Now what we need to do is use this Reynolds number to figure out how turbulent the fish is going to be in this region. So the way we're going to use that is we're going to figure out the difference in the velocity between this region and this region. So we know that the flow going through here also must equal the flow going through here. And since we have a smaller area here and a larger area there, we must have a greater velocity here and a smaller velocity there. And you looking at the Reynolds number equation, then having a smaller velocity plugged in there will give us a smaller Reynolds number, which also give, means that this second fish is much less turbulent. We also are going to have a low pressure here caused by the high flow rate, and we're going to have a low pressure here caused by the turbulent flow. This low pressure here is going to draw the fish in towards this rock, requiring the fish to output less energy to remain in a stable position. The fish life cycle starts off with fish spawning in the fresh water streams. Here, they will lay their eggs, which will develop in the stream gravel and hatch in one to three months. These larval fish rear in the stream gravel anywhere between one to five months. From here, the fry will emerge in the spring or summer. This is followed by the juvenile fish, which rear in fresh water for a few days to four years, depending on their species. The smolts will then migrate to the ocean, usually in the spring or summer, and may spend time rearing in a river estuary. The life cycle starts off again by when the fish return to the spawning sites. Okay, that's the lit fish life cycle. As I just mentioned, fish tend to lay their eggs within gravel bits. This is because these gravel bits serve as a shelter to the eggs. These areas where the eggs are laid are typically of low Reynolds number and as such prevent the eggs from being blown away. The concepts we learned today were right here in the classroom. And here. And out here in the real world. 